Give me strength when I'm weary, oh my Lord. Lift me up when I fall, oh my Lord. Light a fire in my bones that an ocean cannot drown. Give me hope, give me strength until my work is done. Welcome to our January Reflection, the start of a new year and a chance for us to look forward and hopefully leave behind the pain, sorrow and disruption to all our lives as we have all witnessed over the past two years. A couple of weeks ago I undertook the Epiphany services in Holkirk and Watton and I would like to share with you a short piece from that service on Epiphany and its true meaning. Up to the 19th century, the Epiphany was more important than Christmas Day and it was used to celebrate the three kings or the three wise men's visit to Jesus shortly after his birth. So why do we call the visit of the Magi this event in the ongoing of story of Jesus' birth, the Epiphany? The Epiphany we refer to is not so much the visit of the Magi itself, but much more to what it brought to us and all Christian people since the visit of the Magi. For they awoken us an awareness of the reality, the truth that Jesus has been born to the world as Emmanuel, which means God with us. The Magi brought us a new and vivid realisation that Jesus had come to bring us new life into a new relationship with God for all time. What had until that time only been the words of the prophets and had been for so long the desire of God's people was now seen to have happened. Indeed, God in Jesus, or God with us, would himself experience the whole spectrum of human emotions, joy and celebration, fear and deep sorrow. He would even suffer human death so that God could transform death into life everlasting. This new understanding of God's nature and purpose, the revelation that God had come to be so close to his people and desire to experience all of the ups and downs of human life was and is epiphany. It is the good news that the Gospels tell us of and within there are many, many, many epiphanies, all of which tell us of God's love for us. As we look back and look forward, let us seek the presence of God within us in every experience of life, in the joy and the sorrow, in the light and the darkness, in health and in sickness. From the songs we sing, to the prayers we pray, to the sermons that are preached, the ultimate purpose of it all is to provide a place where it is easier for people to experience the epiphany of God a time that is structured in such a way as to encourage people to open their eyes and see the God who is here in our midst. We quite often say we have had an epiphany moment, which is a moment of sudden or great revolution to us that usually changes us in some way. We also say we saw the light. Just as the sun rises on every nation, on every kind of people, no matter who you are or what your background is. Just as the sun every morning rises on you, so it is with Christ. His grace, his forgiveness, his salvation rises and shines on every person on this earth. Every person is invited to believe in this child, to worship him, to find their salvation in him. No matter who you are, where you are, you too can go from darkness to light. Amen. Now I'm going to hand you over to the Reverend Janet Easternberry. Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful New Year wherever you were, and I hope your Christmas was, was blessed. Um, it was a very different year this year because we were unfortunately weren't able to have the services we wanted. But regardless, wherever we are, Jesus is with us. 
and um, I don't know how you spent your Christmas, but I was invited to a lovely couple from church. They invited me for Christmas lunch, and it was really wonderful to spend time with them. They're an absolute joy. I spent New Year on my own. Well, actually, it wasn't on my own because it was me and Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus is the most wonderful company. He really is. So even if you were, thought you were on your own, remember that you weren't because Jesus is always with you. Anyway, I hope this year brings you many, many God-given blessings. We always start the year out with so much hope. And I pray that hope continues because despite what is happening in the world, God is still sovereign. He is in control and he is the rock that we cling to that will never let us down or let us go. I don't know about you, but I've been, I try and start, I have a few New Year's, New Year's resolutions, but sadly they don't always last long. <laughs> they have good intentions, like I'm going to keep my study tidy, <laughs> but it soon gets cluttered again. Um, but, <laughs> and another one is, oh, I think I'll start that diet this year. And then that lasts for a couple of months and that's out the window. But you know, the wonderful thing with God is that his mercies are new every morning. No matter how many we we try, how many times we try something and we maybe don't succeed or we give up, God never gives up on us. He is always there, always available, always caring, always listening, and He is so so faithful. So if you have have got New Year's resolutions that don't work out, don't worry, because tomorrow is a new day and you can start again. I just. I was thinking about parish news and we don't really have much parish news at the moment. Um, our services are ongoing, thank goodness, and you're all very, very welcome to attend. It would be wonderful if you could. We unfortunately can't at the moment meet up for um, prayer meetings or Bible study. Um, that's just the rules um, of the church because of the COVID restrictions. So I th I'm thinking that if this continues, I think we're going to have to start meeting on Zoom because we don't want to miss out on, on God's word and what he has to say to us. So I think that's all the news um, that we have. Please just keep praying for each other and know that I am praying for you all too. Let us pray. Living God, teach us through spending time with you now to spend time with you always, through hearing your voice in this time and place set apart, to hear you equally in the daily routine of life. Help us to see around us, in the flowers of the field and birds of the air, signs of your care, love and gracious provision. And so may we trust you better, focusing on the things in life that matter, your kingdom and righteousness, and leaving all else in your hands. Teach us to take every day as it comes, not brooding or fretting about the future, but celebrating each moment you give us and living it to the full, confident that you know all our needs and will not fail us. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I recently um, gave out a 52-week Bible reading plan um, to, at every, to everyone at church. Um, I printed it out and I would encourage you, if you don't um, usually read the Bible daily, to start reading it daily. This is a challenge. It's got every day, it's got uh, the Bible reading that you need to do for that day. There's a box that you can tick um, next to it to say you've completed it. And it works its way through the whole Bible in, in, in the year. And I would really encourage you and challenge you to do it because this is the most wonderful book. God's Bible is a, is a, a storybook of God's love for us um, and how he is so faithful. Even when we turn our back on him, he never gives up on us. And it's a book that is, is we are part of the story. We think, oh, maybe that was olden day times. That was a long time ago, but it's not. We are part of the story, of God's story. We are Jesus' hands and feet on this earth. 
And it's up to us to show Christ's love to others so they can come to know our wonderful God. I thought what I would do is um, show you my wee basket that I have because I don't know about you, but I have a quiet time every morning. And I think it is so important because we feed our bodies, but do we feed our souls? Our souls are often starving. And isn't it strange that we look after one part of our body, but not the other? And I find if I don't have my quiet time in the morning, then my day is out of sync and it just doesn't feel right because I haven't been able to put in what I need to give out. And so I would really encourage you, if you don't have a quiet time, to really start thinking about it. And I'll show you my wee basket that I have um, in my quiet time. I keep a wee basket like this that has all my books in and I'll go through what is in it. This is what I, I have. I have my daily Bible reading notes and this is from um, UCB. It's the word for today. It's, it is for free. You can go online and you can request a copy and I would really, really encourage you um, to get this. It's daily readings and they are so uplifting and, and really help you to start thinking deep, more deeply about what God's word is saying. Um, what I do is I go through this. This is my day, the Daily Walk Bible. And every day it has a scripture as well um, to read for that day. It gives you a wee bit of information about the scriptures. And it just takes you a lot deeper. And I find that because it's got daily readings and, and everything, it keeps me committed to go working through the Bible again. It's, it's like this sheet um, that I handed out at church. Um, but this is also going through it um, chronologically. So and this, this, uh, this sheet moves around through the epistles and history and the law. But the whole Bible is covered as well. So this is the Bible that I use. Um, it's, through, it's a New Living Translation. There are many different translations. And it's important you find one that you feel comfortable with. I um, like the New Living Translation. It's really easy to read and, and is understandable. Um, if I get stuck, anything that I'm reading and I don't understand, I always say, God, please help me. Please let your Holy Spirit show me what you're saying in, in these words. And I would encourage you to do the same because we don't know everything. I don't know everything. <laughs> There's a lot in, in this wonderful book um, that needs further insight from the Holy Spirit. So I would encourage you to ask God to show you. So this is what I use. There's also the New International Version. There's the King James Version. Whatever version you're comfortable with, uh, I would encourage you to use. So that's what I do. And then in my basket as well, I have um, a Bible with large print because sometimes my eyes are tired and I just flip over to this Bible, which has large print to save me digging around for my glasses. I also keep a journal where I write down anything that I feel God is saying to me or prayer requests. Like if I um, want God, particularly seeking God about something, I write it in here with the date. And then there comes a time when I, the prayer has been answered and I can put the date that it was answered in there. This is also this journal I also use to say thank you to God. So every day I find one thing at least to say thank you to God for and I write it down in my journal. It's a, it's a really precious book this week because when you look back in the years, you'll see how faithful God was. You'll see that even though you went through difficult times, God was with you and he carried you through. I've also, there's another book that I've got is Step by Step Through the Bible. And this really explains things really well. So if you want to know, have a short synopsis on all the books of the Bible and um, have some reading and understanding, this is another wonderful book um, to use. I also, in my quiet time, t have a book each time that I start to work my way through. And I do like a chapter at a time. And this is the one I've got at the moment. It's called Simply Pray by Johannes Hartel. I've just started it and I'm really enjoying it because people think prayer is so dry and, and, um, and sometimes boring, but it's not because we're talking to our Father. We're talking to the one who made us and who one who loves us. 
So it is so, so important. And I really would encourage you to spend time every day listening, reading God's word, hearing what he's saying to you and bringing your requests before him because he longs for us to do that. And lastly, in my basket, I have this um, book called Jesus Always, which is daily readings. And I'm just going to read to you the one from January the 1st. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. As you begin a fresh year, rejoice that I'm continually working newness into your life. Don't let recent disappointments and failures define you or dampen your expectations. This is a time to make a fresh start. I am a God of unlimited creativity. Expect me to do surprising things in this year that stretches out before you. Today is a precious gift. The present moment is where I meet with you, beloved. So seek my face throughout this day that I have made. I have carefully prepared it for you with tender attention to every detail. I want you to rejoice and be glad in it. Search for signs of my loving presence as you journey along the path of life. Look for the little pleasures I have strewn alongside your pathway, sometimes in surprising places. And thank me for each one. Your thankfulness will keep you close to me and help you find joy in your journey. In your journey. What an encouraging verse. And every day there's something that's really, really encouraging. And it just builds you up and lifts your spirits in this hard time and in this hard world that we are living in. And another thing that I have in my wee basket um, which I use every day is our prayer diary, which I'm sure many of you get copies of. It's really wonderful to be able to pray for people. It gives us day by day um, different prayers. And it is wonderful knowing that we're all praying together at the, um, each day for the same things. And it's thanks to Esme for putting this together. What a wonderful, wonderful gift she has. And we so appreciate her. We're going to go now go over to... The next escapade of Lucy, and I've got to say, I love Lucy. Hi Lucy, did you have a good time at New Year? Yes, I had lots of fun, Grandpa. Did you make a list of your New Year's resolutions, Lucy? What's a resolution, Grandpa? Well, it's a promise you make to yourself. A New Year's resolution is a list of things you promise to do or not to do in the year ahead. So, what sort of things should I promise to do? Well, you could promise to help more around the house. And I could promise not to fight with Mitch and Annabelle. And I could promise to do all my homework on time. Well done, Lucy. These are good resolutions. And you could add one to keep your room tidy. It's a bit of a tip with all your clothes and toys all over the place. But I've made promises like that in the past. And I haven't always kept them. I promised I would always be home in time for tea, but sometimes I forget and come home late. I want to like everyone, but then someone makes me angry and I don't like them anymore. I know, Lucy. It's not easy to keep our promises and always do the right thing. But God wanted to show us how to do the right thing. And that's why he sent his son Jesus at Christmas time, so that Jesus could show us how God wants us to live. I don't think God will be very pleased with me, because I sometimes do wrong things, and sometimes I break my promises. Does God say, you have made a mistake and failed to keep your promise, 
So I'm never going to have anything to do with you again? No, Lucy. God knows that it's difficult to always do the right thing. And we are not always as good as we should be. But God loves us so much that even when we make mistakes or break our promises, God forgives us. God does not forget his promise to us. He still forgives us. He still loves us, even though we don't. God always keeps his, his resolutions. So, Lucy, whenever you make a promise or a resolution to yourself, think about God's promise to you. I hope you will always try your best to keep your promises. But if you make a mistake, isn't it good to know that you can turn to God and be forgiven? Even though we fail, God's love and forgiveness never do. Now isn't that good to know, Lucy? It certainly is. Thank you, Grandpa. Now, will you help me make my list of New Year's resolutions? Okay. What is your most treasured possession? I will show you mine. This is mine. It is my Bible. This is such the most important thing to me. It's an absolute treasure. You can see I've written in it to highlight things. It is, this is so life-giving. And if I had to, if the house was burning, which God forbid it, it doesn't, but if it was, this would be the, the, the treasure that I would save. It is really so precious to me. And I pray that through your Bible readings and, and um, daily readings that you come to know this wonderful, wonderful book and come to love it because this is how God speaks to you and this shows of his love for you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, not simply for making us, but for giving us life for the sheer joy of being alive, for the pleasure of real friendship, and for the opportunities to enjoy your wonderful creation. We praise you that you have so made us that we can find renewal and satisfaction and a sense of completeness, not only in the world around us, but also in the love with which you have filled our lives. We thank you not only for making us, but for making us your special people. You have done this, not because we are worthy, but because we must bear a special responsibility. Thank you for giving us a world to care for, for other people whose needs are our opportunities to show your love and kindness, for helping us to see even the hard times and the times of difficulty as opportunities to rediscover your strength and power. We praise you for the faith with which you have filled our lives, for the growing certainty that you will never fail us, that your peace, love and mercy are the things that really matter. Thank you for Jesus Christ, through whom we are made your special possession. And Father God, I just pray for a blessing on everyone, Father God, that is listening in. I pray that they know your presence so closely and how dearly loved they are. So please protect them and bless them and keep them safe till we meet again. Thank you, Father. I ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I leave you with a scripture verse. It is from John fourteen twenty seven. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And I really pray that you know God's peace always. Till we meet again, bye-bye, take care, God bless.